Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. Well, call it what you want. A miraculous event, fate, karma. But the fact is, it's a once-in-a-lifetime encounter against incredible odds. Two brothers, listen to this, who had never met. They knew each other existed, but they'd never met. They ran into each other on a beach in Hawaii, only because one offered to take the other's picture. Take a look at this. Fate can be poetic. For Rick Hill and Joy Parker, it certainly was. They were just two regular guys from New England on an island 6,000 miles from home. Joey had moved to Hawaii, and Rick was vacationing there with his family. Their chance encounter turned to friendly banter, then, suddenly, a life-changing revelation. Out of the blue, I, you know, I asked him if he knew uh, the name of his father, uh, Dickie Halligan. Who is this stranger asking me if I know my father? That's when these two guys from New England realized they were brothers. Mind-blowing. A fraternal reunion on a dazzling coastline at the edge of the earth. Euphoric. After four decades, Joey and Rick finally caught up with the horizon. And tonight we've got both brothers here. Welcome Rick Hill and Joe Parker. We're going to start with you, Joe, because you were really the one that sort of precipitated this thing. What made you approach the Hill family and get this thing all going? i got to tell you, that Vegas don't have these odds. I, I only approached the family because um, it's a, it was a new gig for me, and I saw you know in the hospitality industry, I had just changed jobs from 20 years in the car business. I saw a family enjoying Waikiki Beach, just wanted to be hospitable, and nothing more than that. So, so you'd ask somebody to take your picture, your wife or something, or your fiance? Yes, I did. I'd ask her to take a picture with me and the kids with a diamond head in the background. And then this guy walks up and goes, oh, I'll take the picture. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and he didn't get diamond head in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He screwed the picture up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn you. Is that the kind of guy he is no, you found yeah, out after yeah. all this time? I'm a car salesman, not a photographer, so hey, what do I know? I learned something that day, though, anyway. How did you guys get lost to one another? What's that story? Um, you, go ahead. Well, um, you know, Joe was born five years after I, and um, we never knew of each other up until, uh, I guess, Joe was 21, and I was like 30. Your dad finally told you. Twenty six. There's a, there's a you have a half brother out there. Yes, and he said you you know you have a half brother out there. I really don't know how to get in contact with him, and and you know kind of took it in stride. Did he feel and, bad about it? Was he guilty? Uh, no, I don't think so. And Joe knows more of this story as to why um, that all happened. But uh, my mother is um, suffers from a mental illness, uh -huh. and um, so. Uh, you know, I was just a baby. I really don't know, but the story I have is, you know, she kind of played some tug of war game with uh, the guy who I bear his last name, and, and this Dickie Halligan gentleman. He got tired of it, and at about six years old, he parted ways with my life, and then he came back to find me when I was 21. And Dickie, Dickie, did. Dickie he, I understand he put an ad in the paper or something. Yeah, in the local newspaper, a friend of mine's mother found the ad, brought it to my attention, and it's almost like a missing persons ad. And I'm like, you know, I'm not a missing person. What is all this about? Who's what is this? Yeah. So I call and I get my Uncle Dickie. And I'm like, Uncle Dickie, how you doing? It's been years. And he said, I'm coming to see you, kid. Because he sounds like a lot like Rick. He's got that raspy voice, you know, Rick. Rick so this is somebody about. you knew as your Uncle Dickie. Right. right. Uh, I see. When I was a kid, I think, um, for whatever reason, to make it less complicated between, you know, this is your father and that's your father. My fam my grandmother at the time, who passed away when I was 11 from cancer, I had, uh, used to make it easy and she used to say, boys, your Uncle Dickie's here. And so, just to you know, make it easy. Out of kids. curiosity, did you feel any kind of special connection to Dickie ever? I and mean, did you know that there oh, was something there? I'll tell you what. As a kid, he was the greatest guy. He used to drive a rig. He used to pick us up, bring us all kinds of places, and he was a lot of fun. He was, you know, had a big heart. And so, when this is the guy that then steps up and said, uh, "Rick, I I'm your dad," or Joe, rather, "I'm your dad." How, right. how, did, how did you feel? Oh, I was irate for somebody to leave me in that position. Um, you know, with a, you know, I was in. I've been in and out of the foster care program. Um, my whole life, uh -huh. and uh, you know, my mother's mentally unstable has been her whole life. So, so whole you life. feel like he should have stepped in and stepped up as a dad somewhere along the way there. Well, I, you know, hindsight now, at the time when I was 21, I was a young kid, you know, I was a young punk, and I was, you know, I was just mad that somebody would come in, into my life at 21, and tell me that my father, and I was like, you know, those are fighting words. Uh. Then he told me I had a brother, and I'm like, you know what? You just told me I had a father that I never had for 21 years. Now I got a brother. Whatever, buddy. See you later. And, and that was it. That was the end of my relationship with him. I talked to him two months later after that and never again. So I knew him when I was five or six as an uncle, loved the man to death. Then he came and ruined it by telling me he was my father. And then out of my life, he went for good. For good? 
yeah, I never bothered with him again because I was angry, you know. But and in hindsight now, you know, back in the 70s, I, you know, I, I mean, it's just, it was just a mess. So Well, the 70s was a mess. You'll find no argument here for me on that. But, <laughs> but, but, but so, so now you come to Hawaii and you meet your half-brother, but you seem to welcome that. You know, I, I'll tell you, um, yeah, I do. I do welcome it. And at first, uh, you know, it's still shocking. It seems like you made peace with your dad a little bit. I did. I, well, I, I, I was able to forgive him later yeah. on in life when, I, as an adult, I started to realize, hey, you know what? I mean, this, this guy went out of his way to find me when I was 21. He stuck around for five or six years. He was probably trying to sort out the mess and just yeah. couldn't get through the red tape. So he went away. He went, moved on with his life. And that's exactly what I've done with my past. And I, that's why I went to Hawaii. moved on with my life. And, Rick, do you guys talk about this past? Do you have any feelings about it yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, I was very close um, to our dad. Um, our father, but um, you know, when he passed away, it was it was pretty devastating for me because uh. uh, we were very close, especially in my adult life. Um, so now having uh, having Joe uh, as my brother, it's like a, a part of him is um, back in my life, which has been um, a, a, you know, it's been fantastic. It's remarkable, and I and we talk every day. A lot of emotions. You guys talk every day every since day. you met in Hawaii. Some, several times a day, sometimes for several hours a day. Yes, yeah, so we've been. Um, yeah, we've. What there's been talk, a lot of emotions. What do you talk about? Well, I, we, you know, I, I guess, and you can chime in on this, but uh, you know, for 38 years, uh, you know, I have some some family on my mother's side. You know, it's kind of a strange situation. Yeah. I, but I grew up in foster care. For the most part, yeah. Okay, um, but I don't. I never, you know, really knew. I carry a different last name that doesn't belong to me. Do you resent that Rick got your dad all those years and you had to get stuck in foster care? No, no. So it's I, not those kinds of feelings. No, it's just that now I'm starting to learn things about myself. We have so much in common. Is is this like your dad? Is Rick sort of play that function? Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, well, we've only known each other for a month. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to say that. I would say I, I'd learn a lot from Rick about who I am through him because we have so much in common, so many characteristics. What do you see that function to be? Just brother? Um, yeah, I think as we go along and we really get to know each other even more, that um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that he'll you know look at me with um, some. You know, maybe some look up to me a little bit, I guess. I'm an older brother, but we're pretty close in age. I mean, five years difference isn't that, that far apart. I mean, this is such an inspirational story. D does it change your outlook on life and your sort of connection to something more spiritual? Yeah, absolutely. I think I've become, uh, I've, I've become closer to God, and I think, um, you know, I, I pray a lot more now, and I just feel like we've been blessed. And um, you know, it's it's like finding a needle in a haystack or winning the winning the um, lottery. You know, the odds in Vegas must be astronomical. Does, does it make you emotional? I mean, you, you're talking about it pre. It, you get emotional, John. Well, you know, I, again, I, you know, like I said, I I moved to Hawaii a year ago to leave my my past behind and just start all over. And so meeting him and go and I've had to walk through certain parts of my life that I tried to just you know. Leave behind. I mean, so I'm, instead you actually accept them and walk through them and, and yeah, them head. here he is. Right. Well, no, it's and, not. It's not about you know. No, I understand it's not about yeah. him, but he represents all that. Too. Yeah, yeah. He, he, any chance to go back to New England? None ever. You were no. trying to get him. Back I gave to him England? some advice. I told him don't don't ever leave the islands. Well, let, let me test how closely genetically aligned you are. Red Sox fan? I'm not, I'm not a baseball fan. I am. Of course. Yes, <laughs> it goes without saying. I'm a, I'm I just got, I got to see if you're actually related. You understand? <laughs> right. so, sales. Uh, we're both in sales. Interesting. Um, we're both uh, we're both very successful in sales. Yeah, matter of fact, the day I, I got a job selling uh, sunglasses on the beach, the high end and, sunglasses. And you probably succeeded at that. Uh, well, I, I, I bet. But he walked up on the beach wearing that same brand of glasses. Weird, weird. Wild. I got to get out of here, guys. Thank okay. you for the story. Appreciate Thank you very it. much, Joe, Pleasure. Rick. Thank you so appreciate much. it.